no Muslim in India has lost citizenship due to the CAA. And thus, we are going to ask the big question, who tried to scare away the Muslims? And why this fear-mongering without any reasons? We'll talk about this uh, with our guest, Ms. Atharzia, Empower Media Panelist, joins us on the program, Tahira Hassan. Uh, she's an activist, also with us on the program. Major Muhammad Ali Shah, defense expert and a regular on NewsX, also with us on the program. And last but by no means the least, Advocate uh, Sham Sharish Rain, uh, Supreme Court uh, lawyer, also joins us on the program. Thank you, everyone, for being a part of this important conversation. Can we also get a... Uh, no, they should be cleared by... No, wait, ma'am. Wait your turn, ma'am. Please wait your turn. Mohammad Ali Shah, I want you to weigh in on this. Like I already said, how is this a problem for Muslims when we already have... A number of refugees. I gave you an example. It's in the last six years, multiple, uh, you know, Muslims, uh, Ahmadiyas and Shias and Sunnis from Bangladesh, Afghanistan, and Pakistan have come into the country. Why is it being conflated with the CAA, Muhammad Ali Shah? Okay, Vri, that's a very good question. The very fact is, the CAA does not take the citizenship of any Indian from any religion. Particularly, I mean, I'm referring to Muslims, it will not take our, our citizenship away. It would give citizenship to persecuted minorities from Bangladesh, Afghanistan, Pakistan. Now, the atmosphere created in the year 2020 was such, in the beginning of it, that, oh, I had served in the army. I am a patriot. Many of us are. We are willing to lay down our life for our country. Tomorrow, we were told that, you know, oh, God, you will no longer be an Indian. Your citizenship is going to go. And anybody, a right-thinking person who's a patriot would get agitated. How can I be not called an Indian anymore? Who's going to decide that? Right. So the very fact is, I would call it as a game of miscommunication. Miscommunication happened over there. Mm. That was, yes. which was the opposition party. They took, they, they, they took advantage of that fact. And they spread a misnomer. I am saying when an educated person like me was almost on the brink of leaving that, oh, it's going to be happening. And now I know it is, that is not the case. Now, as Atharzia said, there is no harm if you also include other religions in that uh, act as well. There is no harm in that. There is nothing to lose in that. You would be only uh, be giving a citizenship to everyone. Now, because... Those, the Muslim communities from these three countries were not included. The impression went around and which was taken advantage of by some designs was that, oh, Muslims in the, in the country are going to be having a tough time and they're going to be deciding and they'll be sent to detention camps and whatnot, they'll be thrown out and huh, another joke. But now we begin to understand and realize that now the second part is I think the government should have been very communicative about it. See, aapko bharkaya jayega ke aisa sa ho raha hai, magar aisa kuch nahi hai. Aap unke bharkaave mein mat aayega because kisi ki bhi nagrita khatre mein nahi hai. You all are patriots, we all honor you. Every, and trust me, had that been the case, the large scale protest we saw all over the country, I don't think us paimane pe aisi protest hoti nahi thi. It would have been, okay, we are, because people are concerned about their own citizenship, right? Tomorrow, if you are told, if you are in a, in a team, a football team, a soccer team, and you're told you're no more in the team, despite you being a good player, despite you being the champion of the team, you will be agitated, why am I not selected in the team? Who's going to decide that? That's the same example I've given over here. So I think CAA, no one should really worry about it. it much was made about it, yes. But I don't think there's much to worry for the Indian Muslims on CAA. Hmm.